Success in online marketing requires that you're constantly churning out awesome content. In this video, I share with you 21 Canva tips and tricks to make your design work easier and more enjoyable. Hi, my name is Paris and on this channel we share with you tools and tips to help you grow your business with online marketing. So consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on any new videos. Tip number one is how to add in a brand kit. So you go to the Canva homepage and then you go to the left hand side where it says brand kit. Just click there and this page will open up for you. So Canva allows you to customize customize your brand kit by adding in a logo, choosing your brand colors and also your brand fonts. So assuming you had a logo, you just click on the plus sign and then you go to where you saved your logo and just click it and open. So the logo will be added in on your brand logos. Then you can click on these three dots to get the logo colors. Just click that. So you can either keep them or remove the one you don't like. And then you can also go to the fonts. And when you just click that, you can be able to add in the fonts that you like. So we'll just choose randomly some fonts here. So that's how to customize the brand kit. You can also uh, name it here. We can call it best brand. So key to note here is that to add in a logo and the brand fonts, you have to be on the pro version. But the free version allows you to have a maximum of three colors here so you can still work with that so when you go back to your design and click color here just click the color there and you can already see we've been able to load in the colors from the brand logo and you can change them accordingly for the fonts you can do the same you just click on the fonts there and you just go to where it says brand fonts so you can just change them as you wish tip number two is to add in a color palette so you go to the home page and on the menu you click on learn and then you go to the very bottom of the page where it says resources and then you click on colors so the page opens up and you have a color palette generator you also have color palette ideas the color wheel and color meaning so we can click on the color palette generator so here we already have a sample image and the colors that have been derived from that so you can try some demo images here to see how it works so if you have an image that has inspired you you can just click on upload image and then you go to where the image is with you can click on this one for flowers then you open it and already you can see the colors have been generated here so if there's a particular color that you like you just copy and then you can go back to the home page and then you can go to the brand kit and you can add the code here you just select this and click on paste and the color has already been added then you can just refresh this page here and now when you go back to your design and click the color that you want to change then you can see that the color that we chose is now active for you to use so we can just change even this one there so tip number three is how to combine fonts. So you just go back to the Canva homepage and then you click on learn like we did for the colors. And then you go back to the very bottom of the page. On resources, you click on font combinations. And here you have a guide that Canva has already prepared for you on how fonts best work together. So you can just read through to see some that work together. I like this one for the ebook. So for this one, you see they've used one font for the heading, for the subheading, and also for the body. So the fourth tip is how to use the single key shortcuts. So the first one is to press T on your keyboard and you already have some text added there. The second one is to press R and it automatically adds in a rectangle for you the third one is to press the letter c and you'll have a circle added in the fourth one is to press the letter l then you have a line that has been added in for you so we've used t for text we've used r for rectangle we've used c for circle and then we've used l for line number five is to perfectly align elements to align them you just select the elements you want to be aligned using your cursor then you click on position and then you can either position them either horizontally or vertically. So we can just click on horizontally. So you see now the spaces between the rectangles and the circle is now even. Number six is to add effects to text. So you just select your text. Then you click on effect. And these are all the effects that you can add to your text. So we can select on either neon or you can even add a shadow. Number seven is to curve text. So you just select on your text and you go to effects. And then at the very bottom, you can see curve text. So you just click on curve text. So now your text is curved. You can be able to adjust the curvature. Tip number eight is grouping elements together. You can just select all the elements that you want grouped together. And you click on group here. And now your elements are grouped. And when you move them, they now move as one element. Number nine is to resize the grouped elements. So you just click and you go to the corners. And you'll see a double-sided arrow. So you can move it inwards to make the element smaller. Or you can move it outwards to make the element bigger.
So tip number 10 is to copy and paste from one design to another. So let's say that you want another copy of this design. You just click on this duplicate page and now you have two designs which are similar. Number 11 is changing the background color. So you just click on your page and then you go to the colors here. So you can add in a solid color. So you can also go to elements and then you click on background or type background at the search bar. And now you have different backgrounds to choose from for your design. Then you can choose one that you like. Number 12 is to add in a gradient background. So you go to elements and you type gradient. And here you'll have many gradient backgrounds to choose from. So we can just select on one and you can just right click to have it as a background. Number 13 is how to access the millions of photos available for you to use for your designs. So you just go to elements and then you go to photos. If you want more photos, you just click on these three dots. It says more. And now you have the apps and integration so you can click on pixels then you have now even more photos to use um, you can also add in pixabay then now you have even more photos to use number 14 is to filter so that you only access the free photos so let's assume that you're looking for um, photos of people jogging so when you see um, this crown where it says pro this means that this photo you can only use it if you're on the pro version so if you keep scrolling down you'll find some that are free but sometimes this becomes very tedious so what you can do you can click on these three lines here and then you can check filter by free and now you only see the free photos number 15 is how to use the photo placeholders so you go to elements and then you go to where it says frames then you can just click on that and we can choose a frame that we like and use this one so we can just copy and paste so that we have um, three of them here so now we can add in pictures yeah, so that's how to use the photo placeholders. Number 16 is to use the letter frames. So you go to elements and then you go to frames. And when you scroll down, you'll have letters here. So we can add in one frame there for letter T. We can also add I to say tips. So now we can add in pictures and we can look for maybe a photo of maybe a sunset. So you just drag the photo and hover it over the frame and it will just uh, automatically fit in. You can also adjust the image inside the frame. So that's how to use the letter frame. So we can group them together and now you can use this for your designs. So you have fun while doing this. I hope you're getting value. If you are, please remember to hit the subscribe button. So number 17, and this is my favorite, is to remove the background from a photo. So you just click on your photo and then you go to effects and click on the background remover and it will automatically remove the background for you. So something to note here is that this feature is only available for the pro version. So now we have a clean photo with no background to use for our designs. Number 18 is how to add an outline to an image. So you just click on your image and then you go to effects where it says shadows. Just click on glow. And now there's an outline that has been added to your photos. We can just change the color. So you go to these three lines and then we can change the color to white so that we can be able to see it. And then we can add the size. So now you can see a glow effect. Then you can also play around with the transparency. We can have maybe the transparency at 100. And then we can uh, reduce the blur so that it's sharp. So that is how to add an outline to your image. Number 19 is to quickly duplicate elements. So say we want more of this um, image. So you just click on the image and then you press Alt on your machine um, if you're on Windows or Options on your Mac and then you drag out. And then the more you keep dragging out from the image, the more images that you get. So now we have um, four images that we can use for our designs. Number 20 is to add a drop shadow to images. So you click on your image and then you go to effects and then you scroll down to where it says shadows and then you click on backdrop and you can immediately see that a shadow has been added around your image. So if you want to adjust it, you click on the three lines and then now you can adjust the angle of the shadow to make it more realistic, either vertically or horizontally. You can also adjust the transparency and even the blur. Tip number 21 is how to add shadow to your text. So you just click on your text and go to effects and just click on shadow here. So now we have a shadow around your text. The second way is to duplicate your text. Then you change one of the text colors. We can change it maybe to yellow. And then you can uh, send it to the background so that it is the shadow. Now you can just align the text to the back text. So now you see the text looks as though it has a shadow. So you can then select these together. And then you group them. And now when you move them, it looks as though it is one text but with a shadow. 
So there you have it, 21 insanely actionable Canva tips and tricks that you can use for your designs. Thanks for watching and if you found this helpful, don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content.